Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am finally talking you through my Cambridge interview experience from beginning to end. I think it's quite an entertaining story. I won't lie, there will be a lot of laughing at myself um, and my low-key stupidity in this video. But I also know that some of you will have had interviews recently and I thought that this video would actually be really useful to make because I know how stressful it can be after you think that an interview has gone tragically um, and that you have no hope of getting in and you're kind of in a pit of despair so hopefully this video can kind of reassure you that it's okay it probably didn't go as badly as you thought and even if you said some very, very silly things, um, you can't judge whether or not you're going to get an interview based off of that, so we can all just calm down. Yeah, and if you have your interview coming up for any other university, then best of luck, and I hope that this calms your nerves a little bit as well, maybe. So yeah, let's begin. Let's begin the fun fest. So, we start on a cold Tuesday morning in December, I think it was the 5th, um, 2017, that was like four years, oh my god, anyway, um, I didn't even say what this interview was for, so we're off to a great start, um, this was for Medicine, Clare College, Cambridge, me and my dad decided, my dad and I, um, that we were gonna head down there in the morning, now Cambridge does offer you the option of staying overnight the night before so that you're already there so you don't have to like rush or anything. Mistake number one, just just take it, just take the option, it's really not that big of a deal. Basically we were like it's fine, I don't live too far from Cambridge in the grand scheme of things so we were just like we'll get there in the morning, it's okay. So my interview was at like 9am-ish, 9.20 or something like that. Um, so we set out 5am-ish, plenty of time was left to get there. So everything was going great, I was just sat in the car having a little bit of a nervous, nervy bee. <laughs> yeah, it was all going great until we got close to Cambridge, like where you're heading into Cambridge. And then the traffic jam started, of course they did it was like past seven morning rush hour what did we expect really we get to the park and ride eventually because there is no way we were gonna drive into Cambridge in morning rush hour traffic um so we parked the car it's all fine of course the bus is late I mean what else would you really expect to be honest obviously it's gonna be late um so yeah i'm i'm starting to panic a little tiny bit but you know it's only like a baby panic we get on the bus and i'm like okay this is fine we're on the bus it's all good um no this man i kid you not this is not even an exaggeration he takes like 10 minutes to buy his ticket um i'm literally just sat there watching him and he's talking to the bus driver for 10 minutes and like in the grand scheme of things 10 minutes is not that long but when you're scared that you're going to be late for something 10 minutes feels like an eternity so i am just getting progressively more stressed that i'm literally going to be late to my interview the bus eventually begins moving hooray woohoo but of course morning rush hour traffic in cambridge the bus can't escape it can it so yeah stuck in more traffic jams obviously um Finally, we get to the bus stop. So my dad begins to like brisk walk slash jog. This is the first time I wore heels ever. And they weren't, when I say heels, they were like this big. It's really pathetic. They weren't even like actual, it, it was like a block. Anyway, I was struggling. I was like hobbling down the street. People were looking at me really weirdly. And I'm just like, I can't do this. Um, and if you've been to Cambridge, you know that cobbled streets everywhere. So I was <laughs> going on the cobbles like, I hope I don't die today. My dad just had Google Maps up on his phone and he was like, right, we're going this way. We had no idea where we were going. 
Um, and obviously don't trust Google Maps to tell you how long it's actually going to take. And we get to, this is, this is the best bit, the culmination of lol. Um, we get to the bit, if you've been to Cambridge, where, like, outside Keys on King's Parade, and it's, like, blocked off because they are filming. There is literally a production team. There are horses. There are people in, like, old-fashioned dress on the street and police are like cordoning it off and I'm just there like you have got to be kidding me because that's like the the path that you would go down to get to the college we were literally so close we managed to like squeeze past obviously they weren't actively filming at that point um and we were we were on the on the road again finally made it to the college, I was positively frazzled. In fact, I was 20 minutes early, but I had planned to get there like an hour-ish early, just to like sit down, calm down, mentally prepare, but no, that didn't happen, obviously. I managed to find the room okay. There's like a meeting roomy kind of vibe bit with sofas and stuff, and then the two rooms are attached to the meeting room, and that's where the interviews were. Um, there were a few other people there, nobody was talking, it was like dead silent, people were looking at notes, I sat down and I was like, right, we need to, we need to calm down here. After the ordeal of that morning, at Claire we had two interviews, so one of them was a sciencey one and one of them was a bit more of like a personal one, but it was also kind of sci- I'll explain a little bit more in a bit. Um, also I did ask my DOS if I can talk about this and he said it was fine, so yay. Um, so yeah, I had the science one first. I'm a really awkward person anyway, but in these situations I just don't know what to do. No one tells you about like the little things where it's like, I stood up and I was just like, do I take my things with me? Do I leave them out here? Do I need like a paper? Do I need a pen? do I take them with me? Is it going to be weird if I'm like not prepared because I left them outside, you know? Um, so I think I just left my stuff in the end. Um, and I walked over and here's the next dilemma. So you know how everyone tells you to like shake the person's hand? It's literally the little things that throw you off so much mentally. But um, I was like, okay, I should probably shake their hands, right? But one of the people was holding the door open for me. So I was like, it's going to be a bit weird if I shake his hand out here in the room, just like at the door while he's holding it open for me. So I thought, you know what, like we'll kind of do it another time, like later. So I kind of walked through the door. I'm like, hi, obviously I'm not going to like shake his hand while I'm walking through the door. But then when I walk in, I realize it's going to be really weird if I stand there and wait for him to close the door and then shake his hand at the door because there's another person in there. So the other person tells me just to like sit down um, and then I'm like, great, I haven't shook either of their hands now. And like, I know that in the grand scheme of things, I keep saying that phrase, I don't know why, it doesn't really matter. But to me, I was like, well, you've already messed it up and it's been zero minutes because you haven't even started the interview yet. The interviews were both 20 minutes long and there were two people doing it so they would do 10 minutes each and basically one person would interview you and the other person would just be silent. <laughs> this first question is ingrained in my brain forever probably. Not completely because I can't actually remember what half the question was to be honest but just the stuff that I said is truly next level. My family still makes fun of me to this day um, but basically it was like a di mechanical kind of diagrams of different hearts from different animal species and the question was literally just like tell me which animal these hearts belong to. Um, so I got the human one. <laughs> Thank God. Um, and I was just sat there like, I didn't want to be a vet. <laughs> but obviously it's to do with like your thinking processes and stuff. So I started off by doing what I was told to do in this situation, which was talk them through your thought process. So I was talking them through what I saw on the diagrams, um, you know, trying to do a decent job. The only thing that I got in this bit was the fact that one of them was similar to a fetal heart, which I had read about in this one random article that I had decided to randomly read about like fetal 
circulation. And this is where it's like really weird how some random thing that like you don't think is going to be useful actually kind of comes in handy. Um, but yeah, that's the only thing that redeemed me in that whole interview because the rest of it... So there was this heart, right? And I... We established that it was... That the species would have lungs. It was like a water-dwelling being as well as on land. Guess what I said? I said it was a fish. As though fish have lungs. And the guy was literally like, um, yeah, you know, fish don't have lungs though. And I was just sat there like, yeah, yeah, you're totally right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Can, I was literally mortified, mortified, because here I am in a Cambridge interview telling this educated doctor sat in front of me that I think a fish has lungs. At that point I was like, you've really done it now. Yeah, we carried on. He kept giving me more clues. I think at one point he said it wasn't a mammal and I said it was a beaver. <laughs> the one animal that I could think of at that time was a beaver. That was literally the only animal on the planet that I could think of that lived in water and on land. Um, and a beaver is a mammal, in fact, and he did remind me of that fact. And once again, I was sat there like, ah, oh, yes, yes, you're right. In the end, he just told me it was a frog. It, apparently, my brain just didn't register a frog as a species anymore. But yeah, so that whole question, there were other ones, I think, but I don't remember them. One of them was a fish. I did not get that one, so it was traumatizing, to be honest. Um, and then I had a couple more from him, I think. I can only remember one more, which was um, measure, how would you measure the volume of blood in a person's body? My clever answer was to measure the diameter of <laughs> all of the person's blood vessels and their length to calculate the volume so that I could then calculate how much blood they could hold. Which, to be fair, is not the dumbest thing I said in that interview, but it was very, very wrong. I just remember vividly, he was like pointing to his cup to try and like give me a clue, but I had no idea what he was telling me with his cup, so yeah, that went well. And then the other interview, honestly, it is literal blur. I cannot remember for the life of me anything concrete from that. All I know is that it was quite shambolic. I think it was along the lines of who would you give this care to, which group of people, something like that, like more in, in the healthcare realm. Um, I had no clue what they wanted me to say and he kept kind of, I could tell that he was trying to direct me onto a path of thought but I didn't know where this path was, how to get onto this path so I just kept basically repeating what I was saying just in different ways in hopes that he would finally give up because I really didn't know what else to say. I had no idea. Um, so safe to say, I left that interview not particularly pleased. Um, no, I literally thought I had just like ruined all of my chances to get into uni. I had an hour between my interviews, so I just spent it sitting in the waiting room. Uh, people were actually talking this time, which was really nice. I would highly advise that if you can talk to people, before your interview to do that because it really calms you down so much. For one, you're not thinking about interviews and you're not kind of thinking about how nervous you are. And two, you kind of remember that you're all in the same boat. Eventually, it's time to do the second interview. And at this point, I'm honestly like, it can't really get any worse, can it? This one actually was not bad at all. The professors who did it were honestly the sweetest people like they made me feel so at ease which I don't know if they agreed to do good cop bad cop beforehand but it was just a much more comfortable interview 
Um, I think I shook their hands, guys, so it's okay, it's okay. That that was the first sign that it was going well. Um, so the first professor asked me about my personal statement, which I had obviously prepared for in advance, and it was like my personal statement. You can't really go wrong with your own personal statement. Um, it was just asking me to elaborate on some work experience and volunteering stuff that I had put in there. And then the other person asked me, honestly, again, kind of a blur. It was along the lines, the words that come to my head are like reliability or like double blind trials, placebo, like that kind of vibe. Um, it was a lot more sort of like applied biology, I would say. Um, but it was also, again, kind of doable, I think, or at least they made me think it was doable because they made me think that what I was saying was like mildly could be correct. There was a lot of like head nodding in this interview and like saying yes, um, and like, yeah, that you're right, or hmm, have you thought about this, blah, blah, blah. So like it was a lot more <laughs> encouraging, shall we say. So yeah, I finished that interview and that was me done. My dad and I headed home straight away, and to be honest, it didn't really, like, hit me fully what I had done, really, um, until, like, the Thursday. I was kind of blocking it out, and then Thursday afternoon at work, I had, like, a full breakdown. I just remember sweeping a classroom and, like, crying, um, because I thought I had, like, completely ruined all of my chances and I thought I, I was done for, was never gonna get in. I pretty much was a sobbing wreck for like four-ish days, but at that point I had another interview so I was like, we need to pull it together a little bit here. And I was just sad for the majority of that period of time. But as you can tell, it is not worth it because you cannot predict it. I got an offer somehow, they definitely don't just look at your interviews. Um, and you can never really predict how you did and how other people did. Like, I thought no one could have said dumber things than me. Yeah, I did get an offer. Just don't stress yourself out. It's gonna be okay. In the interview, if you mess up, don't let it circulate through your brain for the rest of the interview because it's not worth it. And everybody makes mistakes. You're probably not really gonna get many answers correct, if any, but all they really probably care about is seeing how you think, seeing how you deal with it. I hope that you somewhat enjoyed this story. It's probably a lot more entertaining to me than it is to anyone else because I just think, what an idiot. Um, but yeah, and if you are waiting to hear back from Cambridge or Oxford or any other uni or you have your interview coming up for anything, I wish you the very best of luck. I hope you get everything you want out of it. Okay, I hope you get in. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel for more uni content. Thank you for watching again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!